Welcome to the last lesson on climate of India where we shall be focusing on the characteristics of Indian monsoon. Well, there are five other lessons from this chapter. The video links of all those lessons are provided in the description for your reference. So let's begin today's lesson. We know India enjoys tropical monsoon climate with four distinct seasons. Summer, advancing monsoon, retreating monsoon and winter. By studying Indian climate, we can conclude that monsoon is an important part of it. It lasts for about 6 to 8 months. Firstly comes the season of advancing monsoon and then it is followed by the season of retreating monsoon. This monsoon has a significant influence on the lifestyle of Indians and also affects the Indian economy by supporting agriculture. Now, there are some unique characteristics of Indian monsoon. Let's know about them. Well, as we know, the word monsoon comes from an Arabic word, mosim, which means seasons. Well, it actually refers to the seasonal reversal of winds. This is to say that we know during summer, the winds blow from sea to land. That is, the winds blow in southwest direction during summer. Whereas, during winter, the winds blow from land to sea. That is, in northeast direction. And this happens due to change in temperature and pressure conditions. This is to say that we know during summer, the temperature of Indian subcontinent is higher. As a result of which, low pressure exists over Indian subcontinent, whereas the surrounding water bodies are comparatively cooler. So, high pressure exists there. So, the winds blow from this high pressure region of the water bodies towards the low pressure region of the Indian subcontinent, whereas during winter the conditions just get reversed. Due to low temperature of Indian subcontinent, high pressure exists there. Whereas, the adjoining water bodies are comparatively warmer. So, low pressure exists over the water bodies and winds move from land to sea. That is, the high pressure region of Indian subcontinent towards the low pressure zone of the water bodies. Thus, we found that Indian monsoon is characterized by seasonal reversal of winds. That is, with change in seasons, the wind flow also changes their direction. Now, let us explore some other characteristics of Indian monsoon. Another important characteristic of Indian monsoon is that it does not rate continuously for all the days during monsoon season. Rather, it rains for some days and then it is followed by a period of dry spell. So, rainfall occurs in India at the intervals of dry spell in between wet spells. Now, look at this chart very carefully. This chart shows the weather conditions for the month of August that corresponds to the monsoon season. Now, here we can see that from 3rd August to 7th August, it rains continuously. Whereas, then it is followed by some days when it rains for shorter time. Then it is followed by some days when the amount of rainfall decreases. Again, look at here. Here, we find that from 21st August till 24th, it does not rain at all. So, we find that rainfall occurs at some intervals of dry and wet spells. Now, during this period, when it rains heavily and torrentially for a span of 4 to 5 days is known as burst of monsoon. That is, the wet spell of Indian monsoon is known as burst of monsoon. Whereas here, when it does not rain at all, for a span of 4 to 5 days, and we see a clear sky is known as a dry spell or break in monsoon. 
so break refers to the dry spell whereas burst refers to the wet spells and an important feature of indian monsoon is that rainfall occurs here at the intervals of dry and wet spells well another important feature of indian monsoon is that not whole of india enjoys rain at the same time this is to say that there are some parts where rain comes early whereas there are some other parts where rainfall occurs at other months look at these two charts the first chart shows the date of arrival of monsoon and the second chart shows the date of departure of monsoon winds here we see that the southern part of the country receives rain first it receives rain almost by the first week of june then the monsoon winds gradually proceed towards the northern plains the northwestern part of the country is the last to receive the monsoon winds it receives these winds at around a period of mid week of july now although the northwestern part of the country is the last to receive rain but it is the first to witness departure or withdrawal of monsoon winds the monsoon winds depart this part of the country by almost the first week of september then the winds blow over the northern plains and gradually proceed towards southern india the monsoon winds finally exit india by the last week of october and then the climate gradually dries up so this is the pattern or timing of monsoon winds we learn that the southern part of india is the first to receive the monsoon winds and the last to witness the withdrawal of monsoon winds whereas the northernmost or the northwestern part of the india is the last to receive the monsoon winds whereas the first to witness the withdrawal of monsoon winds so by studying these two maps we can conclude that indian monsoon is sporadic and erratic in nature which means that it is uneven and non uniform now before proceeding with our lesson let us try to answer this question the monsoon winds strike the southern part of india by the first week of and the options given are june july august or september well which of these options do you think is the correct one well you can't remember we just read that monsoon winds strike the southernmost part of india by the first week of june so the correct option is june in fact the southernmost part of the india is the first to receive these monsoon winds so the correct option will be june now let us proceed with our lesson now not only the timings of monsoon winds vary but also the rate of precipitation differs throughout the country well this map shows the distribution of rainfall in india here we can see that there are some portions that receive heavy amount of rainfall that is the western coastal plain of india and the northeastern part of india the amount of rainfall occurring in these regions exceed 200 cm in fact the world's rainiest place that is mosambram is situated here in meghalaya which is a part of a region of heavy rainfall now the areas adjacent to these regions of heavy rainfall receive moderate amount of rainfall about 100 to 200 cm well some portions of western coastal plain a huge portion of northern plain including the eastern coast of india falls under the category of moderate rainfall now if we move towards the interior parts of the country then we shall find that here the amount of rainfall is quite low about 60 to 100 cm well these regions receive low precipitation because by the time the monsoon winds arrive these regions their moisture content decreases which is why they receive little precipitation and finally the northwestern part of india and the northernmost part of india receives scanty rainfall below 60 cm 
In fact, Thar Desert, which is located here, receives an annual rainfall of less than 25 centimeter. In fact, these regions in India are very dry. Well, the distribution of rainfall in India is such because we know the Arabian Sea branch of southwest monsoon winds enter India from this side. So, maximum rainfall occurs here. Again, the Bay of Bengal branch of southwest monsoon winds enters India from the northeastern side and then they proceed towards the northern plains. So, this part of India again receives high amount of rainfall. Now, by the time these winds enter the interior part of the country, their moisture content decreases, which is why these regions receive less amount of rainfall. Thus, overall, we find that the distribution of rainfall in India is uneven and non-uniform. Well, another important characteristic of Indian monsoon is that rainfall in India is always inconsistent and uncertain, which means that the monsoon winds may arrive early or late. Look at these newspaper clippings here, we can find change in rainfall pattern over the years. In some of the years, we find that monsoon arrived very lately, that is in the year 2017, 19, 2020, rainfall occurred very lately, almost by the mid week of June when it is actually supposed to enter India by the first week of June. But in these years, rainfall occurred very lately, almost by the mid week of June. Now, not only the timings of these monsoon winds vary, but also the rate of precipitation differs. For instance, in some of the years, that is in 2022 and 2021, we find that it rained excessively, almost about 40 to 50 percent higher than the normal rate. Whereas, in 2017, the rate of precipitation was almost 13 percent lower than the normal rate of rainfall. Thus, we find that Indian monsoon is inconsistent and uncertain and we find deviations from the normal conditions of monsoon. Now, let us see what happens as a result of these irregularities in monsoon. Well, to understand how irregularities in monsoon affects the country of India, let's have a look at these two pictures. The first picture shows that the soil has completely dried up and it refers to drought condition. Well, drought happens due to delayed rain and scanty rainfall. Now, the second picture shows that the city is completely under water. Thus, it shows the situation of a flood. Now, flood occurs due to heavy and torrential rainfall. Thus, we find that abnormalities or irregularities in monsoon often results in droughts and floods. Droughts happen due to scanty rainfall, whereas floods happen due to heavy and torrential rainfall. Now, this drought and flood situation severely affects the lifestyle of Indians and also has a strong impact on Indian economy. So, as mentioned just now, irregularities in monsoon lead to drought and floods which have a strong impact or rather a negative impact on Indian economy. Well, this is because agriculture which is an important part of Indian economy is heavily dependent on Indian monsoon and this agriculture gets affected due to irregularities in monsoon. Well, we know during flood the soil completely dries up and loses its moisture so it cannot support growth of crops. So, drought can lead to crop failure.
again excessive or heavy rainfall leads to flood now during flood the crop fields get submerged under water and this directly affects crop yield or growth of crops thus flood can also lead to crop failure in other words we can say that irregularities in monsoon lead to crop failure which negatively affects the indian economy it mostly affects the poor peasants whose primary occupation is agriculture thus we learn that irregularities or abnormalities in monsoon directly affects productivity of crops and it also negatively affects the indian economy by hampering agriculture so now let us quickly summarize the important characteristics of indian monsoon well we discussed that indian monsoon is characterized by the seasonal reversal of winds which means that the winds blow from sea to land during summer and in southwest direction and from land to sea during winter or in northeast direction also rainfall in india has dry spells which refer to break in monsoon and wet spells which refer to burst in monsoon again indian monsoon is sporadic and erratic in nature which means that not whole of the country receives rain at the same time the southernmost part of the india is the first to receive rain and the last to observe withdrawal of monsoon winds whereas the northernmost and the northwestern part of india is the last to receive monsoon winds and the first to observe withdrawal of monsoon winds again rainfall in india is unevenly distributed which means that there are some places that receives heavy rainfall almost above 200 cm whereas there are some other places that receives rainfall of less than 60 cm that is scanty rainfall now the last characteristic of indian monsoon is that it is irregular in nature which leads to drought and floods we learn that drought occurs due to delayed monsoon and scanty rainfall whereas flood occurs due to heavy and torrential rainfall now this drought and flood again leads to crop failure which also has a negative impact on indian economy so these are the major characteristics of indian monsoon so this brings us to the end of the chapter on climate of india in this chapter we learn that india enjoys tropical monsoon climate with four distinct seasons summer advancing monsoon retreating monsoon and winter and we have discussed in details about each of these seasons and finally in this lesson we discuss about the characteristics of indian monsoon Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now